We want to understand the average requests per second our systems are able to handle, how long it takes to respond to this request, and what percentage of them are failing. Let's take a look at how you can do load testing for your APIs and Postman using the collection runner. I'm in a movies API collection, and I'm going to click the collection run button. I'll navigate to performance. And here I can see I have three configuration options. The first one is virtual users. This indicates the number of users I want to concurrently make a request to my API endpoint. I can make this 50 or just leave it as 20. And this can be as high as 500. For the test duration, this is the duration I want this virtual users to concurrently make a request to my API endpoint for. It sets here as 10 minutes, but I'm going to make this one minute for the sake of this video. For the load profile, you have two options. We have fixed and ramped up. Fixed indicates that we want the number of virtual users that is concurrently sending requests to our API endpoints to be fixed all through the specified duration. While ramped up means we want the number of virtual users that is indicated to gradually increase for the ramp up duration was specified below. So if the first duration was five minutes, for example, I could make the ramp up duration two minutes. And this would mean that between the first zero to two minutes of the test duration, the number of virtual users are going to gradually increase from zero to 50. I'm going to leave this as one now, and I'll leave the test duration as one minute as well. I'll run my performance test. Now I can see that some graphs are starting to populate on my um, screen. And at the top here, we have the total request sent, which indicates the number of requests that has been sent in total. We have here the request per seconds, which indicates the throughput. We also have the average response time, which is constantly increasing as more requests are sent which is constantly being adjusted as more requests are being sent. We have the error rates here, which indicates the percentage of errors um, that have occurred. Now, moving to the graph. In the horizontal line here, we have the timestamp for each of these requests that are being sent. On the vertical axis to the left, it indicates the error rate, while the vertical axis to the right indicates the response time. For each of this line, we can choose to toggle which ones we want displayed or which ones we want in game. For the virtual users, it is indicated in gray, and we can see that it is gradually incre in increasing with time. So I could click, choose to click this um, to hide or click it again to display it. For our throughput, which is measured in requests per second, I could also choose to toggle this by clicking it or hide it by clicking it once again. I could do the same for average response time, and I could do the same uh, for the error rate. So I'm just going to keep everything on the screen and go over them. So the first one is the virtual users. Uh, we set this as ramp up to be ramp up in the first for one minute. So it moves from zero to 50 users in the first one minute. And we can see that for the gray here, it starts from zero and it goes all the way up to 50 eventually. Here it's split 48. I'll hide this. Uh, for the throughput, we can see here that at this point we had 13.5 requests per second, and we also have an average response time of 811 milliseconds, and the error rate is zero. Um, we could also check for here that the throughput was 42.5 requests per second. And the average response time was 741 milliseconds, and the error rate here was 1.176%. I could also take a look at the average response time. Uh, for example, I could see that there was a spike here, and it took 1.18 seconds um, to respond. And I could see that here it seems to be low, uh, it took 50, 555 milliseconds, and here it was 648 milliseconds. For the errors, I could see that there's a spike here and the error rate is 4%. I could see that here, no request failed. 
no request field here as, as well. And here we have 648 misorders. Uh, we have an error rate of 4.545 and an average response time of 648 minutes. I could also check the performance details for each of my requests here. For the create movie endpoints, I have 456 requests in total. The throughput was 6.96. I could also check the average response time, um, the minimum time it take for it, it took for a particular request to get sent, the maximum time I could see the 90th percentile and the error percentage. I could do this for other requests as well. At the top here, I have options to filter this graph by request. Uh, so I could filter by any of these requests to just see a graph for that request itself. I could also filter by average response and check the minimum response, maximum response, and different percentiles. Now, if I want to run this again, I could click this run again button, or I could click reset to reset the filter options I have here. So I'll just click run again. And I could see here that I could select other configuration options. For example, I could increase this to 500 virtual users. I could increase the test duration to two minutes. And I could make it ramp up in the first two minutes.